patent law and litigation. How are patents enforced? Just as with any other property right, patent rights would be meaningless without the ability to enforce them in court. In the U.S., early courts treated an inventor's patent rights the same as they did the rights of other property owners. Supreme Court Justice Joseph Story considered patent rights to be sacred, the just reward for inventive ingenuity. As he noted in Lowell v. Lewis in 1817, the proper duty of the court is to ensure that wrongdoers may not reap the fruits of the labor and genius of other men. The relative uniformity and certainty of patent right enforcement by the courts also proved critical in encouraging investment in commercializing those patent rights. In the 1831 case of Whitney v. Emmett, Supreme Court Justice Henry Baldwin explained how British courts saw patents as a zero-sum trade-off between private rights and the public good. The explicit intention of U.S. patent law, however, was to benefit the inventor in the belief that maximizing individual welfare leads to maximum social welfare. How has enforcement of U.S. patent law evolved through the years? Over the years, enforcement of patent rights has been unbalanced, ranging from relatively strong to relatively weak. Despite these shifts, the U.S. legal system has always operated on the theory that the best way to achieve the proper balance between private rights and the public interest was through the decentralized decision-making of inventors in the free market. There are four key principles of U.S. patent law that have remained constant over the centuries. One. Patent validity is determined by the novelty, non-obviousness, and utility of the invention and not the identity or business model of the inventor. 2. No patent holder is required to practice the patent or make products based on it. 3. Patents are freely transferable and tradable property rights. And 4. Patent infringement is a strict liability tort. Infringement need not be willful. What about patent litigation? The first patent case on record was that of Benjamin Folger, whose patent for the production of candles was invalidated by the District Federal Court for New York in 1792. Cases like this serve the important function of settling either the validity or the disputed ownership of the rights to critical new technologies. By doing so, the courts provided greater certainty regarding the value of such rights to entrepreneurs and investors alike, while also settling the validity and rights to critical new technologies. A famous case in point is the litigation between telephone inventors Alexander Graham Bell and Alicia Gray. Today, some critics argue that an explosion of patent litigation is harming business and stalling innovation. Although there has been an increase in infringement suits, evidence shows that the rate of patent litigation today is below historical norms. According to the Government Accountability Office, patent infringement suits have risen steadily, from 2,520 cases in 2001 to 4,015 cases in 2011. Meanwhile, the number of patents granted in that same period increased by only 35%. Statistics show an even sharper rise in the number of patent suits filed in 2012 to 5,189 cases. However, analysts attribute this increase largely to the anti-joinder provisions of the Patent Act of 2011, which curtailed the practice of naming multiple defendants in a single infringement suit. As Carla Reidholm of the patent analytics firm Lex Machina explains, plaintiffs must now meet more stringent requirements to file a case against multiple defendants. So instead of Plaintiff X filing one case naming 20 defendants, Plaintiff X might file 20 lawsuits, one per defendant, each with unique civil action numbers. The PricewaterhouseCoopers 2013 patent litigation study offers another explanation, reporting that 96% of all increases in patent infringement suits since 1991 can be attributed to a corresponding increase in patents granted. However, it's important to consider that the average number of patents issued has remained at the same level, which is 13 patents per billion dollars of GDP since 1963. While the number of suits filed has increased in correlation to patents granted, the number that actually go to trial has remained fairly constant over the last 30 years. Thus, the evidence does not suggest that patent litigation is 
out of control today. As retired Chief Judge Paul Michel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit notes, the level of patent litigation today is rather modest for a nation with 2 million active patents and hundreds of thousands of businesses competing against each other. History supports Judge Michel on this point. The estimated 124-plus smartphone patent suits filed between 2009 and 2012, for example, were less than one-quarter the number of patent suits filed during the first telephone wars of Alexander Graham Bell's time. Back then, the American Bell Telephone Company and its successor, AT&T, litigated 587 patent cases alone. Historians have noted that every major industrial breakthrough of the last 150 years have seen a similar surge in patenting and patent litigation, which goes to show that history repeats itself, like in today's smartphone wars. In fact, the most competitive technology arenas have always been this way. In Edison's time, the inventors of electrical discoveries accounted for 41% of all patent suits filed during that period. The record suggests that patent litigation serves a vital function by settling the validity and disputed ownership of patent rights. Music